What does the Bible say about the shape of the earth? Many, even religious people, ask why it matters whether the earth is flat or spherical. It is very important to understand which of these two options is true. The goal of the earth as a sphere is to refute the truth of the Bible and to hide the existence of God as creator. The round or spherical earth supports evolution and atheism, while the flat earth with a dome supports the existence of the creator. What does creator say about the shape of the earth? In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. The text says that God made a firmament out of a solid material, which we're going to clarify later, and it is located in the midst of waters, to separate waters from the waters. And later we see that he stretched it, as Bible tells us, and he created or made the heavenly dome. And God made a firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Praise him, ye heavens of heaven, and ye waters that be above the heavens. The psalmist says that the waters are above the sky, that is heavenly firmament, or above the dome. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day, firmament or the heavenly dome. Has thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? Firmament or heavenly dome is made out of a solid material, and it supports the ocean of waters above itself, and it covers the entire earth, so we are truly inside some kind of conservatory or greenhouse. Permanent or the heavenly dome. The psalmist says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the permanent showeth his handiwork. Permanent is a masterpiece of a powerful and magnificent creator. Permanent which covers entirely the whole earth, all continents, and all seas. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the permanent of his power. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for light in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two grey lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. According to scripture, the sun and the moon are two lights, which means they have their own light, while science claims the opposite. Science claims that the sun has its own light, while the moon reflects light from the sun and does not have its own light. In Isaiah 13, verse 10, we find, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. The text tells us that both sun and moon have their own light. Mark 13, verse 24, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Sunlight is golden yellow, raises the temperature and heats, dries, preserves, is antiseptic and has a strong shine. The moonlight is silvery white, lowers the temperature and cools, is moist, septic and less bright. 
And God has set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. The firmament provides support to celestial bodies, the sun, moon and stars, which the Bible calls the host of heaven. In the heaven the stars are attached to the firmament, from which they can fall off to the earth, and they are called shooting stars. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. It is again mentioned that the moon has its own light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And they that be wise shall shine as a brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. There is one glory, or light, of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differ from another star in glory, or in light. Some give stronger light, lesser light. The sun, moon, and stars circle above the earth's surface at different speeds, so they show us the time like three hands on a celestial clock. For that reason, they are much smaller than the Earth. The stars can never be galaxies because they are small and located under the dome. Also, extraterrestrials or sinless worlds do not visit us because we are in sin and we are in quarantine in comparison to other worlds. That is why none of them visit us who live under the dome. When describing the shape of the Earth, in the Bible, the Hebrew word chag, which is circle, is always used, not da, which is sphere or ball. The Bible indicates that it is a circle or circular, not a sphere or a ball. Various concordances and lexicons for chag, they give the verb form as draw a cycle. Today, terms such as circle of the earth, solid and immovable, Falling stars, etc., are symbolically used. These statements were made at the time when it was not a symbol but a fact that was firmly believed. Above the stars and the heavenly firmament, that is the dome of heaven, were the heavens, and above was the heaven above the heavens, where the Almighty dwells. The ends of the earth were not a symbolic way of speaking but a fact. The earth is a round, flat tablet. Or plate over which is a firmament or dome in the form of a solid transparent sphere stretched like a tent. The earth has edges, four corners, ends, pillars, foundations, and is flat and motionless. Now we're going to read biblical verses which confirm this. The Bible teaches that the earth is a stationary circle or round flat plate that does not rotate. The following Bible text confirms this. The French theologian and pastor John Calvin proudly quoted Psalm 93.1 saying, The circle of the earth stands firm, it will not move. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Say among the nations, the Lord reigns, the earth is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. If the earth was spinning, Joshua would command the earth to stop spinning, instead of the sun and the moon. Let's have a read about this. Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about the whole day. 
And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made a firmament, and divide the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Heavenly firmament or heavenly dome is set in a shape of a heavenly ark, sphere or dome and it carries and supports the waters above the firmament. The sky is blue because of the waters above it. Has thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass. The firmament is made of a thin, very firm and transparent material that is stretched or rolled over the earth. Now, we will see some other texts which confirm this fact to us. The same word is used he as here in the text which describes God who stretched or rolled over above the firmament. The very same word is used in the following text, so we will be able to see what the Lord wanted to tell us. Let's read. And they did beat, which is stretched or rolled out, the very same word here is used for the heavenly firmament also, beat, stretched or rolled out. The gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. The same word is found in Numbers chapter 16. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen senses wherewith they that were burned had offered and they were made, or stretched, rolled out, broad place for a covering of the altar. Here is another example. He had made the earth by his power. He had established the world, circle of the earth, some translation is, by his wisdom, and had stretched out, rolled out the heavens by his discretion. The sky is transparent and sapphire blue color because there is heavenly ocean above the firmament. Amos 9.6 It is that builded his stories in the heaven and had founded his troop in the earth. The Lord is his name. The earth is foundation to the firmament. At the end of the earth, the firmament is supported. It covers the entire earth and practically earth is like a big green garden. Four continents are covered by the firmament. And God made a firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. The Bible speaks of the existence of three heavens placed vertically one above the other. The first heaven is our earthly heaven under the dome. It is in the second heaven which is above us are sinless worlds. In the third heaven which is above the second heaven dwells the Creator, His Son and the angels of God. I knew a man in Christ about fourteen years ago whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. Everything which is located under the firmament is under the feet of our Lord. For this reason, the same footstool of our God is used here. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? On the spherical earth, God's throne or the third heaven is not for everyone in the same direction. For some it is up, and for some it is down, left or right, depending on where it is viewed from. On a flat earth it is in the same direction for everyone, upwards, as it is written in the Holy Scriptures. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and it were the body of heavens in its clearness. Above the stars and heavenly firmament, that is the dome of heaven, were the heavens or the second heaven, and above was the heaven above the heavens or the third heaven, where the Creator dwells. There is no firmament on a ball that separates the earth's waters from the heavenly waters, 
And the book of Genesis tells us that right at the beginning of creation, God created the firmament to separate the waters from the waters. God says in the book of prophet Isaiah that his throne is up above a heavenly firmament, which he set up as a tent over the earth for a living. He looks down at people on earth just as people look as grasshoppers on the ground. The earth is at the foot of his throne and down below his feet. Where is heaven if earth is a ball? It is found all around the earth in that case. The Bible says heaven is up. Jesus ascended to heaven, going up to where he will come from, as the angels told the apostles and disciples. In which direction would Jesus ascend from the ball? If it came from Israel, from the northern hemisphere, then for us it's up. And what about those from the southern hemisphere below? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiwork. In them had he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the earth, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The Bible says that the sun is rotating, and it goes from one end of heaven to another, and thus complete its circle windows and doors of heaven begin of the flood in the 600 year of noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened bible teach that there are windows of heaven so god allowed for the windows to be open and for the waters of the ocean which above the firmament started to fall on the earth, causing the flood. The end of the flood. The fountains also of the deep, that is thought of the earth, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. In the other words, God closed the windows of heaven, the rain stopped, and the end of the flood came. Though he had commanded the clouds from above, and opened the doors of heaven, and it shall come to pass that he who flee from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from the high are open, and the fountains of the earth do shake. In many places in the Bible it speaks of the windows of heaven, also of the fountains of the earth. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens, there are waters above our heaven. When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Heaven as a tabernacle or tent. He stretched out heavens as a curtain, and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. Who covers thyself with a light as a with a garment? Who stretched out the heavens like a curtain? The earth's heavenly dome is compared to the image of a tent or tabernacle under which people live as if under a cover or curtain. This is what we find in Bible and truly praise be to God for how beautiful comparison he chose using the tent to describe the shape of our permanent he created. We truly live in a greenhouse under the heavenly firmament, stretched out of a very solid material which carries and supports the heavenly ocean above us. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as a grasshoppers, and stretch out he heavens as a curtain, and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. Scientists claim that the earth is a rotating sphere, while God claims that it is a circle with a dome that does not move. The Bible gives us counsel. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days coffers, walking after their own lusts. And we truly live in the times where the earth is flooded with coffers, People use different ways to mock the Lord and the revelations he gave in his word. 
Also, in connection to this topic, people throw out imaginations. There are some turtles or elephants carrying the flat earth. And the goal of that is all to make a fun of Bible and indirectly of God, our Creator. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, Bible says that they deliberately refuse to know, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. In the past world was crushed by the flood, and in the future, some years, just some years ahead of us, the world is reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and petition of ungodly men. The Bible exposes human lies. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Verses which speak of the circle of the earth. So we have earth as a circle now. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the circle of the earth by his wisdom and stretched our heavens by his understanding. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the circle of the earth. The earth trembled and shook. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The circle of the earth and all its fullness, you have founded them. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou had formed the earth and the circle of the earth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. The circle of the earth also is established that it cannot be moved. Let the sea roar and all its fullness, the circle of the earth and those who dwell in it. With righteousness shall he judge the circle of the earth, and the people with iniquity. Then in Job we have, he drew a circular, in Hebrew the word chag is used, horizon on the face of the waters, at the boundary of the light and darkness. When he prepared the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle of the face of the deep. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, that he might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. According to your name, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth, your right hand is full of righteousness. Consume them in wrath, consume them, and they may not be, and let them know that God rules Jacob to the ends of the earth. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth, thou hast made summer and winter. Then in Proverbs we have, Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans, with a voice of singing declare ye, tell this, Utter it even to the end of the earth, say ye, the Lord had redeemed his servant Jacob. Holy Scriptures describe the earth as a circle or circular, but not as a ball or a globe. In Bible 
Hebrew word chag, which is circle, is always used, not adar, which is sphere or ball. The above translations for chag as circle or circular are correct as they speak of drawing something on a surface. Isaiah 22 says, Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity, and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball, in Hebrew, da, into a large country. In Hebrew, there is a word that means ball, globe, or a sphere, and that's the word da. Had the prophet Isaiah 40 meant the ball, he could certainly have used the word da instead of the word chag. Earlier in Isaiah 22, the word da was already used to describe a globe or a ball. However, in Isaiah 40 verse 22 says, It is he that sitteth upon the chag of the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as a grasshoppers. He don't say he sits upon the da, the ball, but upon chag, the circle of the earth. This is what the model of the earth described in the Holy Scripture should look like, as opposed to the one imposed and advertised by the Luciferian elite. Jesus told the spiritual elite of his time, Ye are of your father the devil, and thus lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. The same is very true today. Whether they are leading priests, politicians, scientists, or any other group of people. If people do not serve the true God and do not rely on him, learning from his holy word, they will be drawn into Lucifer's deceptions and lies and defend them as if they were the greatest truths. And for this cause, God shall send or allow them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all may be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, God has given the free will to all. He will not pressure anyone to believe the truth. God is giving openly the truth to all. However, if the people love the lie more, God will allow it. As we read, strong delusions so they will get deceived and condemned at the end for being on Lucifer's side. According to the Bible, the sun, moon and the stars move at a different speed, circling above the Earth's surface, while the Earth is stationary and immobile. The sun, moon and stars are placed in the heavenly firmament, not in a distant, airless space. The movement of the sun above the surface of the Earth regulates the appearance of the day and night, but not the rotation of the Earth, as science claims. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastened to his place where he arose. In the pictures, we see clouds behind the sun, which shows that the sun is in the earth's atmosphere, as the Bible says, and not in the airless space. The God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endured forever. The moon and the stars to rule the night. The sun, moon and the stars are placed on the heavenly firmament, and not far in the airless space outside the firmament. God has done many miracles in the past history of this world. How was a day extended in the days of Israel of old? Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, 
and hasted not to go down about a whole day. This text is found in Joshua 10 verses 12 13. Another miracle the Lord has done. The Lord turns ten hours backwards. Second Kings twenty nine. And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, and the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees or back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees, nay, but let the shadow return back ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backwards, by which he had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun of Dial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. And this was a great miracle in the days of old Israel, and many Babylonian magicians came down to Israel to hear of the miracle which took place. In Amos A9, and it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and this event is ahead of us, and I will darken the earth in the clearest day. Everyone who receives the mark of the bees ends up in a lake of fire, not in a ball of fire. The lake of fire is flat. When talking about the destruction of the earth by fire, it is never mentioned the ball of fire, but it always states the lake of fire, because the earth is circular and flat, not the spherical or round. We will read now some verses that confirm this to us. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the bees and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The, and the deaf and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. According to NASA, the circumference of the earth at the equator is 40,009.15 kilometers. The curvature of the earth is 8 inches per 1 mile. How then can a lighthouse a few tens of meters can be seen at sea from a distance of 150 miles if the curvature of the earth is 14,496 feet, which is equal to 4,418 meters? The lighthouse should be under the line of sight in this case. It would not be visible. That said the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth surge out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done, said the Lord. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. The Lord is telling us that until the second coming of Christ or the end of the world, People will not be able to measure the size of heaven and the depths of the earth. Although scientists say how big is the size of the earth's crust, depth, however, the Bible says that people won't be able to measure it. For people, it is unsearchable. One of the modern lies. For myself personally, this is one of the greatest non-biblical evidence that the earth is flat, circle. On the map we've got all the continents and the size of them is measured in million square kilometers. Now, if we take a look upon Australia, which size counts 7.69 million square kilometers, and on the other side Greenland, which size counts 2.16 million square meters, it is obvious that these two are not in proportion. The blue bit, which is Greenland, is far greater than the yellow bit, Australia, which is, in any common sense, Greenland should be in proportions about four times smaller than Australia, isn't it? As we go from the center of the flat earth to the ends, the parallels or parallel circles increase, 
from the equator onwards they are bigger and bigger and bigger, finally to be the biggest at the end of the Earth. At the ball, the parallels from the equator decrease. By making a spherical Earth, the Luciferian elite reduce the parallels from the equator downwards so that uh, they had to reduce the size of the continents and oceans below the equator in order to fit it all on the map of the spherical Earth. That's why everything below the equator is presented in way smaller proportions and it don't match the land above the equator in size. That is why there is no map of the spherical Earth or globe where the continents are shown in proportion to their real sizes. If the continents and oceans below the equator were drawn in real sizes, there would be an increase of parallels, which is parallel circles, and eventually we would get a map of a flat Earth, which they want to avoid in every possible way. Therefore, there isn't a single correct map of the Earth, which is real and in correct proportions. All maps which can be found in all schools today and unis are false and untruthful. The most commonly used is Mercator's map of the world from 1569. The problem is that this map shows a disordered reality favoring the size of rich countries in the north. Peters tried to correct Mercator's mistakes in proportions. On its map, the northern continents are far smaller than Africa and South America, which seem to be dropping towards Antarctica. The continents in the image are disproportionately represent the same as on Mercator's map, which is impossible if these are original images from the space as claimed. The pregnant woman was flying from Bali to San Francisco due to the sudden onset of labor pains that was a forced landing in Alaska, which is completely illogical on the map of the Earth as a sphere because it is very far from the flight path. However, when you look at a map of the flat Earth, everything becomes logical and simple. The forced landing was in Alaska because Alaska is on the flight path between Bali and San Francisco on a flat Earth. The same is true for the flight of aircraft from continent to continent. All deception about the globe is to prove the Big Bang and evolution, and to refute the existence of God, and to present his word, the Bible, as an inaccurate and unreliable book in which only fanatics and enthusiasts believe, and also the intent to shake the trust of Christians in the literalness of the Bible. The deception of the globe orbiting the infinite universe serves to convince many that there are extraterrestrials beings in the universe who are more advanced than us and who visit us, which paves the way for the fallen angels for the final deception that will come, which will bring the world to Judgment Day. A flat and movable earth with a dome proves the creation and confirms the truth of God's word and indicates the existence of a powerful creator. Through the globe, Satan persistently proves the opposite in order to shake the people's trust in God's word and thus in God. It's interesting that the Flat Earth is used as logo on the UN organization. Maybe they know something that others don't. It is interesting that in addition to the UN, other various world organizations use the logo of a Flat Earth. The logo of the United Nations is divided into 33 parts. It is made in the form of a net, which extends over a map of the Flat Earth. The net divides earth into 33 areas however there is no antarctica on the map this net is set across the flat earth and resembles grids which keep us from the antarctica like in a prison cell all countries in the united nations are signatories to the antarctic agreement this agreement prohibits everyone from visiting antarctica without special permission the strongest physical evidence whether the earth is flat or round is found indeed in the Antarctica. At the ends of the Earth, the heavenly dome touches the ground and is tangible. This is the strongest practical proof that the Bible is true. Satan knows this well, so through the UN in 1959 he made the Antarctic Agreement, 
which was signed by all members. According to him, no one can go and conduct research in Antarctica without a special permission, which is issued only to those selected for this research. For this reason, the inside of Antarctica is strictly forbidden area guarded by the International Army until 2041. The first thing visible when Antarctica is reached is an ice wall several tens of meters high. Then hundreds of kilometers of icy desolation spread, which has almost no life and vegetation in itself. The temperature is low and goes up to minus 100 degrees Celsius. This is a picture of an ice wall of which the dome is attached to. Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, thus far you may come, but no further, and here your proud waves must stop. The goal of Lucifer and his Jesuit ally through the massive deception of the globular world is to cause removal of God, distrust in God's word and preparation of the world for the greatest deception, extraterrestrials. Today's science is shaped and is under the control of Jesuit order and serves their purposes. Nicolaus Copernicus was a Jesuit priest and his role was to promote the concept of the earth as a ball revolving around the sun. Heliocentric Copernic system says, the sun is the center of the solar system, the earth rotates around its axis, the earth rotates around the sun. Nicolaus Copernicus was the promoter of the heliocentric system, which he processed in the manuscript on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres in six books published in Nuremberg in 1543 near the end of his life. Copernicus dedicated his revolutionary work to the Pope Paul III on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. Luther said of Copernicus, There is talk of a new astrologer who wants to prove that the earth moves and goes around instead of the sky, the sun, the moon, just as if somebody were moving in a carriage or ship, my hold that he was sitting still at rest while the earth and the trees walked and moved. But that is how things are nowadays. When a man wishes to be clever, he must needs invent something special. And the way he does it must needs be best. The fool wants to turn the whole art of astronomy upside down. However, as Holy Scripture tells us, so did Joshua pen verse 13, be the sun to stand still nearly the whole day and not the earth to stop. Founders of heliocentrism are painted with a compass in the hand which is the symbol of the Freemasons. As early as 1484, even before Copernicus, a globe was presented on the tomb of Pope Sixtus IV, which tells that it was planned for a woman or a Roman church to present to the world as a globe. The contribution of the Roman church to the matter of astrology is a globe. And we can see it on the picture where it is engraved, astrology. On the tomb of Pope Sixtus IV, the relief of theology shows what a woman, a symbol of the Roman church, brought to the world in terms of a science of God. A woman or church with satanic horns grease the trinity that is in the sun and represents the sun God. We could see from both pictures what Roman Catholic Church brought to the world. Two things. There are heliocentrism, which is sun-centered, and theology about a sun God which is the trinity God. Lucifer presents himself as a sun god. The heliocentric system puts the sun, which is Lucifer, in the center around which everything revolves. It is claimed that the earth was formed from the sun and as such continued to revolve around it. Sun god, he called god triune, tree into one god or trinity, 
and brought him into Christianity so that everyone would worship him. Triune Son God is Lucifer and his mark is 666. The Jesuits rejected the biblical model of a flat and motionless earth with a dome. Then they invented a globe that is tilted at 23.4 degrees so that it remains to the base 66.6 degrees, which reveals Lucifer who is behind these ideas and calculations. Sunday, the day of the sun, is dedicated to the Trinity or the Sun God unlike the Sabbath which is dedicated to the Biblical God, the Father and His Son Jesus Christ. Jesus' resurrection is celebrated on Sunday, although according to the scriptures it was on Saturday. The birth of Christ is celebrated on December 25, after solstice when the day is extended, as the day of the birth of the Son God. However, the birth of Christ according to the scriptures was on the 1st of Tishri in September. The author of the Bing Bang Theory was the Jesuit George Lemaitre. Einstein and all his scientific work were under his control. Pope Francis, also a Jesuit, claims that it is possible to believe in both creation and evolution. When we read about the origin of the world in the book of Genesis, we run the risk of imagining God as a magician with a magic wand, who can do anything, but it is not so said Pope Francis. In other words, Pope Francis denies God being almighty or omnipotent. He said that God is responsible for the Big Bang from which life issued forth, that God is the God of this world or Lucifer who supposedly creates order out of chaos. Tomb of Pope Gregory VIII We see how the Pope raises his hand in a manner or like banishing the woman who represents the Protestant Church and Pope Gregory VIII. He helped the French Catholics in the fight against the Huguenots and approved the massacre on Bartholomew's Night in 1572. The Roman College is named after him, Gregorian University. He reformed the Julian into Gregorian calendar. Also, there is a Roman soldier which lifts up the cover and we are able to see next. Here we have the tomb of Pope Gregory VIII, made by Camillo Rusconi, completed in 1723. In addition to the globe, the relief also shows the physicist and astronomer Aloysius Lelius kneeling before the Pope to whom he presents his new calendar, which is later named after this Pope Gregorian calendar. However, at the bottom is a dragon that carries on its back the papal throne on which is Gregory VIII. In Revelation 12, 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now it is clear to us who stands behind this all, and who is the one who carries it upon his back. The founder of all these ideas and this false science. It is the Satan himself, Lucifer, the fallen angel. All the governments and religions of the world are under the control of the Jesuits, who lead them directly or through various secret societies and organizations and direct them towards one goal, which is the creation of a new world order in which Lucifer will rule through them.
the Jesuit order produced more astronomers than the rest of Europe combined together. They also owned the two largest observatories for observing the sky in the Vatican and on Mount Graham. When the Jesuit Malachi Martin was asked what the Vatican is doing on Mount Graham, he said, The highest levels of the Vatican government know what is approaching the earth and that will be of the greatest importance in the coming years. The fact that religious order possess a large number of scientists indicates to us that something great and important is being prepared. The Vatican says it will reassess its positions on the foundations of Christianity. The Jesuits believe that extraterrestrials will evangelize us. They are technologically and intellectually far ahead of us and probably did not fall, so we will have to adjust our beliefs to their revelations. Then they invented a heliocentric system where the sun is in the center and everything revolves around it. Astronomy had been proving the heliocentric system and thus had claimed that the Bible is wrong. The Big Bang was made up, then evolution and a huge universe in which the Earth wanders aimlessly in order to completely destroy any knowledge of the magnificent and powerful Creator. And the Creator gave His Son to die for us, thus showing His unsurpassed love for this world which rejected Him. For evolutionists, even if God existed, would be very far away and therefore uninterested in life on earth. There would be countless galaxies and other worlds in the vastness of space. For the Jesuits it is a scientific fact that there are extraterrestrials who will soon visit our earth. When the aliens come, the Pope said he would baptize them. Extraterrestrial visits are not possible in a closed system of the earth with a dome. No one will fall for this alien deception with a clear understanding of the truth about the shape of the earth. People who know the truth will quickly realize that any aliens visiting our closed system must be demons or genetically modified people from this earth. Thus, any attempt to put the Pope at the head of the world government and religion would fail. The Pope would have never been accepted as the one who saves the world if he cooperates with fallen angels or demons who present themselves as extraterrestrial beings. Globe Ground for heliocentrism Ground for evolution Big Bang Atheism Extraterrestrials Paganism Occultism New World Order and satanic control of the world. Flat Earth and Heavenly Firmament, it confirms Bible, scientifically proven, points to God as a creator and reveals satanic deception. God's model of the universe says, In the beginning God created, while Lucifer's model of the universe says, In the beginning there was a Big Bang. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. Psalm 104.24 says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all, the earth is full of thy riches. We will end this study here, and greetings to all following these studies, and may the Lord bless us, and be with us until the next fellowship.